The Cavs 2023 Summer League squad features the likes of Amani Bates, Isaiah Mobley, Luke Travers, Khalifa Diop, Sharif Cooper, Pete Nance, and more. It's a pretty stacked squad as far as Summer League rosters go. And I was pretty damn hyped to see the development of Cooper, Mobley, Travers, and Diop in particular, and I knew that many eyes were expected to be on the Cavs' most recent draft selection in Bates. And rightfully so. But you guys, I ain't gonna lie, there is one player in particular that has completely overshadowed the rest and made me a full-on believer. That would be none other than Craig Porter Jr., who the Cavs managed to scoop up as an undrafted free agent. So today, I'd like to take the time to discuss one of Summer League's most unexpected surprises in Porter Jr. But before we jump into the breakdown, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and hang around as I'll be dropping daily Cavs content throughout the Summer League and all season and appreciate the support. Now back to the breakdown. Now after watching this guy play just four Summer League games, all I can say is, how in the world did this dude not get picked up in the draft? That is my biggest question as of right now. At 23, he is definitely coming in as an older prospect after spending the bulk of his time at the collegiate level with Wichita State. This has only added more polish to his game though than the usual Summer League participant. He has a terrific feel for the game, has completely bought into the concept of team basketball despite the Summer League environment being an outlet for individual displays, though this can be said about every member of this squad. And to top it all off, he has been gifted with a high level of athleticism. Listed at 6'2 and just 180 pounds, you could absolutely be forgiven for thinking that this young man is undersized, but he definitely doesn't appear to play that way. Porter Jr.'s style of play makes him appear lengthier than he is listed as, and he is constantly challenging you. He can leap out of the gym, which is already put on display with numerous highlight-worthy dunks. Mobley bringing it up the floor, finds Porter for the put-down. His lack of volume scoring at the collegiate level caused a bit of concern as he topped out at just 10.8 field goal attempts per game, why with the shockers, but the mere fact that he managed to convert over 47.8% of these looks is pretty telling in my opinion. He is far from a shot chucker and appears to prefer to take a more calculated approach to offense, which has resulted in him playing some of the most efficient basketball we've seen so far. It's this approach to the game that has me thinking that he may not need to score in bunches to earn consistent minutes at the NBA level. He just doesn't strike me as a guy that needs the ball in his hands at all times to be impactful. Take his ability to rebound for instance, Porter Jr. is currently averaging 7 rebounds, 2.5 of the offensive variety. This is an alleged 6-2 guard putting up these type of numbers. He is second on the team, right behind the likes of Isaiah Mobley and Khalifa Diop, players that tower over him. These aren't your standard run of the mill opportunistic rebounds either, he is attacking the glass ferociously, there is something primal about it. He has mentioned in the past that one of the players he modeled his game after was Bajan Rondo, and those of you familiar with the earlier versions of Rondo might start to see the similarities here. This bodes well for a Cavs team that doesn't feature a ton of rebounding ability out of its backcourt sans Donovan Mitchell. Now as a ball handler, Porter appears very unselfish and sees the court very well. That was already apparent in his time at Wichita State, but he has brought that with him to Summer League and has elevated the play of those around him as a result. His ability to decipher a defense quickly has led to some great setups for his teammates, and the patience that he displays in waiting for a play to develop has really impressed me. He plays with a deliberate pace and is adept at changing speeds when the times call for it. Just pay attention to how devious and evasive his dribble is, and the way that he is able to use his burst at the drop of a hat to get to the rim. Porter Jr. may not be a volume scorer, but he can generate offense for himself. He is a smooth finisher inside and has a dangerous pull-up game. His ability to twist and contort around bigger defenders inside to get to his spots is breathtaking and shows just how much he has worked to develop his footwork. The offensive side, now you got his son. I mean, this is, you know. He shows no fear of taking contested shots as he's completed over 36% of his triples on almost exclusively pull-up triples. And according to Everything Cavaliers, he ranked within the 83rd percentile as a pick and roll ball handler, the 82nd percentile for pull up shooting, and in the 77th percentile while finishing layups. The area where Porter has impressed me the most is his work on the defensive end of the floor. He can stay in front of his man at the point of attack, but is perhaps even more impactful as a help defender. 
this dude has one of the quickest reaction times I've seen in a minute and has really good sense for where the ball might be headed. This has helped him leap into the passing lanes and muck things up for opposing offenses before they even see him coming. This man looks like a free safety out there picking off passes on the backside. Guys want to figure out what it takes to be a pro early on in their career. Here's here's Porter it. soaring up and what? lays it in. We'll have this scream. And no one in their right mind would pick a 6-2 guard to lead their team in rejections, but an ultra confidence in himself has led him to believing that he can challenge just about anyone no matter their size. Overall, Craig Porter Jr. is as well-rounded as they come. You would be hard-pressed to find a more fundamentally sound summer league prospect. You don't become the first player in school history to lead your team in blocks, rebounds, assists, steals, and total points scored if you aren't dedicating yourself to competing in all areas of this game. This man has a winner's mentality and I truly appreciate the fact that he is willing to do whatever is necessary to help lead his team to victory. His fingerprints have been all over the Cavs 4-0 record in Summer League and frankly they don't get to this point without his stellar play on both ends of the floor. And we aren't talking about a player who has competed in this type of environment before, which is the case with a player like Sharif Cooper, who looks great as well, but has had the opportunity to do this before. We're talking about a true first timer here in Porter Jr. It just goes to show that scouting and the art of evaluation in general is an imperfect thing. At 6'2", he isn't an ideal size, but plays bigger than he is listed. The high level of athleticism that he has won't pop as much when viewed against the backdrop of NBA level talent, but he fits in. His pull up ability is something that can be built upon, but he hasn't done it with enough volume to truly say that it'll carry over to the big league level. He also isn't a threat yet as an off ball shooter, but the foundation is there. Given time, Porter Jr. should be able to become a serviceable shooter in catch and shoot scenarios. He may not have the ceiling that others do on this Cavs Summer League squad, but he might be the most polished and NBA ready as of right now. Now, does that mean that the Cavs should go ahead and send Ricky Rubio packing? Absolutely not. It's far too early to tell if this is the norm or an outlier. Summer League can be fickle like that, but when you take into account everything that this young prospect does well, it's not very hard to envision him becoming a solid rotational piece in the NBA. His malleability is something that many teams would probably love to have, and I'm sure that based off of what they've seen, they're kicking themselves for not drafting him or picking up before the Cavs did. He will likely spend time with the Cleveland Charge this season and could use that time to further hone his existing skills and maybe pick up a new one or two while there. And with the current state of the backup point guard position being unstable, Porter Jr. could find himself with a great opportunity to sneak in and compete for the job sooner rather than later. I am very excited to watch this young man develop and given time, he could end up being the Cavs backup point guard of the future. That's going to do it for this one folks, and if you are new to the channel and want to see more Cavs coverage, consider subscribing. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, Go Cavs!